Hi students, how are you all? Welcome back in our SS lecture and we have chapter 10 quality formations in the 18th century. As you know that the later Mughal rulers, you know, after that Aurangzeb, the rulers of Mughal, they came in power. They all call that later Mughals and you know the kings they were very weak after the Aurangzeb time period then other kingdoms have then other kings after Aurangzeb they all were called that later Mughals they were big rulers and they did not control over their territories means they were not able to control that past Jews empire and they did not have control over Mansabda, Subeda, Jaminda, then you know Amartyas and then all. And it was the result that all empire had declined, Mughal empire declined with the that death of that last Mughal rulers, Bahadur Shah Jafar, that Mughal empire declined with the revolt of 1857. So it was the decline of Mughals and then you know some other that provinces and some that kings emerged that other independent kingdoms came into the power after that decline of Mughal rulers and you know that Awadh was there that Awadh, Awadh it was their prosperous reasons controlling the rich Ganga plains. It was very rich and fertile plains made by the Ganga rivers and that Bengal and North that India it emerged that independent that kingdom. Our it was Sadak Khan under Sadak Khan in 1722 he was made the governor of that place and he refused and transported that Malwa. He had combined offices of that Diwani, Khojdari and Subidari and which means that his control was that over that all provisions. He also reduced the size of that uh, Dakis and he appointed his own that trusted that uh, you know that well trusted Dakidars and regularly they are checking the formats and revenue from all over the district visited by the offices appointed by the court. So he appointed his own officers in Hawaii and whom that Sadak Khan he appointed his own officers and he regularly checking the accounts of that and the taxes and you know that regularly checking because of that cheatings and that checks for cheat. He also read the revenue from all over the districts every day and he said a number of Rajput, then Jamindar and territories from Afghan of Rohin Khan. So he appointed many Rajput that in his kingdom for that Jamindar and his sister. Under the Sadat Khan, the Ijaradari system was there, it was introduced. The Ijaradars were there, they were given full authority and they controlled that armors and collecting taxes and other responsibilities were given to them by the emperor. The farmers agreed to pay some uh, fixed sum of money, fixed tax of money, and the money lenders and bakers and some influence the management of all state resources. Then the another that independent kingdom that was Bengal. Bengal came independent from the Mughal rule under the that Murshid Ali Khan who was initially that just Mughal governor and he was a Mughal governor and he introduced his own that independent kingdom that Bengal. And he was effectively charged, he got a charge of Bengal in 1703 and he 
invaded his own he merged with his own kingdom he was given the charge of odisha and bihar later and taking advantage of that weakness of the mughal rulers he got that all kingdom he made the murshidabad the capital city and some other the important nawabs of that kingdom were sajid ali khan and the siraj uddullah of nawab then mushid ali khan transport all mughal zamindars to that odisha and added his own that zamindar the borrowed money from the bakers and money lenders and those were unable to pay often had to their land bigger zamindars farmers were taking money from the zamindars and some were unable to pay money to the zamindars their lands were taken by the zamindars or that land owners then they regularly arrangement of finances regular taking of financial debt taxes and the nawab attempted the check of ruling power of english east india company means that english east india company power check but they were defeated the battle of plassey in 15 1757 but he was defeated in the battle of plassey in 1757 then you know that hyderabad was there hyderabad that hyderabad the mohammad kali that qutub shah the ruler of that hyderabad golconda founded the new city the ruler of golconda founded new city that is hyderabad to rule over the hyderabad and he died without his heir and golconda was there it was occupied by aurangzeb he died without any that heir and that whole golconda was there it was occupied by the aurangzeb king so seen kulish khan a mughal emperor ruled over there and thunder is a powerful members of that and member of the court emperor faruk shia given the title of nizamuddin khan in 1730 and eventually gained control over the large area of the place the full political economical and financial administrations were given into financial given into his hand and his growing power made that emperor muhammad shah that nervous and replaced nizamuddin he was not satisfied with him so he replaced with all authority to that nawab with murdid khan as a victory of deccan happened in 1724 that nizam was defeated that mubarak khan and you know a battle took over deccan again with the hyderabad as his capital so that battle happened and was again happened with hyderabad and you know nizam was not founded the state of hyderabad in 1725 nizam was appointed some mansabdars and granted the jagirs given authority to collect the taxes from the peasants and they were loyal to the king so then you know that came that mysur mysur was there it was uh, in the second half of the 18th century the mysur given as an independent kingdom and it was kingdom under the hyder ali and his son tipu sultan hyder ali and tipu sultan both were the powerful rulers and you know there were effective rulers they control all that territories and control all kingdom the modern and introduced weapons were there the new weapons were there tipu sultan was the king in the navy and introduced the new weapons sultan even made efforts to build a navy he introduced a new pilot and new cannon tipu sultan he fought with the marathas many times in his time period and he also faced a problem with the british that problem british government and you know 
he died in 1799 and at the battle of that Thringam Tham fighting with the British. So the time period of Mysore that Tipu Sultan and Hyder Ali, it was a nice time period for that. In that he fought many times with the Maratha and he was he had conflict Tipu Sultan had some conflict with the British East India Company and he died in 1799. Rajput rulers were there. The Rajput rulers like that Ambar and Jodhpur, they came into the power and services. They were giving services to the Mughals and you know, in return, they were that allowed of considerable freedom and control. They were giving service to the Mughals and in return, they were giving freedoms and in their Vatane Chakirs, in their Vatane Chakirs, they were being given that advantage. The Rajput rulers were there with the Mughals until the rule of Aurangzeb. Rajput and Mughal rulers were satisfied until the rule of Aurangzeb, but the rigid and complex policies of Aurangzeb that revolt with the Mughal rulers. Maharana Pratap, you know, of Mewar, he was and he got thrown in 1572 and he was the only that ruler he did not accept the authority of Mughals and he fought with the great army of Akbar you know and during the 18th century Rajput kingdoms were there they began to establish themselves their great and independent kingdom and this later Mughals they fought you know that later Mughals were Peak rulers and the authority was declined. You know that Raja, that Savai of Jodhpur, Ambar, that king, Raja Ajit Singh was there, and that all came in the power. The Sai, Sayyid Das, and the most of that, the later Mughal rulers followed a policy of trying to win over the Rajputs because it was difficult to control the Rajputs, and these Rajput rulers tried to expand their kingdom by stripping and neighboring their Mughal territories. So, that however, the Rajput kingdoms were there. They were that constantly fighting among themselves and that was the decline of that kingdom. The Sikh people were there. Sikh. The Sikh one founded, you know, Sikh people in the 15th century by Guru Nana and, you know, the Guru Tej Bahadur he was there. Guru Arjun Dev ascended that expedition in ninth Sikh Guru that Tej Bahadur boy Aurangzeb. He added the friction between Sikh and the Mughal. There was a revolt between Sikh and the Mughals. The Sikh began to organize themselves as independent nations and military forces under their Guru Gobind Singh. This helped the Sikh to build that regional state of Punjab and Guru Gobind Singh was there at what they stated of Khalsa Pan. He started at Khalsa Pan and the Sikh fought with the Mughals and the Rajput kings. However, they were defeated by the Mughals. So the Mughal rules was there and Sikh peoples were fought with the Rajputs and Mughals and definitely they defeated with the Mughal rulers. After that, Ban Bahadur's death, the whole empire was there of Sikh organized themselves and felt that administrative units were there that all vessels had declined. The Khalsa on the death was there that declared their independence against in the 1765. Then, you know, that came the judge. The Jats were there, they were mostly that Sikhs, they were invaders and they were that cultivators and uh, farmers. They also have the world with the Mughal kings during the Jahangir and Shah Jahan time. So, that judge launched a, a large scale of revolt, prominent, constant revolt with the Mughal rulers and with the Aurangzeb fought war and you know that two prominent their leaders 
church rebellions were kokula and who was the chaminda and you know that telpat raja ram who was the chaminda of chaini both were revolt with the aurangzeb and aurangzeb killed both these and chaminda siraj malwa was the most famous that church ruler under that him bharat was emerged as a strong nation and strong state then came that marathas you know the maratha was a mixture of that regions and agricultures and they they were mixed up in all agricultures and the related castes the following the tradition of that military and service it was written for the grant they received that image had military power they had huge military power under their shivaji it was maratha built a great nation under the rule of shivaji chhatrapati shivaji in 70th century shivaji was the son of that uh, sabdu bosle and a high official with the court of that bila and sabdu was influential the enough to pay that king of abman nal shivaji was succeeded by his son that sambadi who was executed by the mughals and sabdu sambadi's son was there that imprisoned by aurangzeb then you know that the peshwa state the shivajis as the shivajis that successors were big happen after shivaji the shivajis successors were big happen the power passed to the hands in the peshwas the peshwas were the governor or of the ministers prime ministers of the marathas and they took over the charge after that big rulers of shivaji with the help of chieftain of gayakwada and uh, holkaras the many mughal territories attacked and capturing the mughal territories they attacked the delhi and the uh, rajputana by the 1730 that the maratha king was the ruler the entire deccan refused and could not collect the Thoughts and the Sundar Mukhi of the entire regions. In the third battle, you know, in the third battle of Panipat in 1761, the Marathas suffered a massive defeat in the hands of Muhammad Shah. Maratha administration was there. That Maratha administration was there. That very powerful Shivaji time. He developed a great administration. and much of the that he was borrowed from the administrative practices he has made a strong that administration most of the taxes collected from the peasants and farmers shivaji set up a centralized administration work that ministers were there they are responsible in uh, different that post he was assisted council of eight ministers were there that ast pradhan was there then the it was come means that prime ministers the peshwas prime ministers the amatya finance minister sachiv means secretary mantri means home minister suman means foreign debt affair and you know that senapati is their commander nayadis means chief judge and you know they another all ministers were appointed pandita means that religious ministers is all were there shivaji employed the muslims in army shivaji also employed muslims in his army and one one of the indian ruler who tried to develop a name so revenue demands were generally gradually introduced after this, this time and measuring the lands of agriculture and most of the tax they are collecting from peasants and farmers and this was the great he has built great huge army standing army horse army elephant army and the shivaji maintained this all well and they had huge great trained soldiers 
So, this was the animation work of CYB. I hope you understand this chapter well. Okay, thank you children. Bye.